This is a happy medium. No, it's not. Not today. What's that person saying in the background? I don't know. It's not upset. This is a happy medium. The happiest of mediums. In the middle, right down the middle. It's like a, it's like a baseball pitch. The middle, so you can strike or uh, strike the, strike out uh, your challenges in life. So that's what's new. Not much, man. What's going on in your world? A lot. Yeah. You look. Uh, you look tired. I am tired. Tired of life, or just no. tired like you want to sleep? Tired. I want like I want to sleep. So, take a nap. I'll go solo. Okay. One of my paranoid conspiracy rants about how everyone's all to give me. No, please don't. You got to center this thing. <laughs> uh, conspiracy, conspiracy theories. Don't you love him, Alex Jones? Man, he's he's look he's he's looking like he's <laughs> like he's on to something. Yeah, he's probably feeling pretty damn good right now, and that's sad. Does you guys need to pick? Oh, how does he talk? He's talks ah. like he talks like wrestling though, like like WWE. Like he's like ah blah blah blah. He talks like this. Like they got a sex call. He tries. He tries to be a tough guy. Like I'm tough. Like he's tough. He takes his shirt off a lot too, and I would take my shirt off if I was him. I don't take my shirt off. Like if I was on TV, he thinks he's like really ripped and shit. Very intimidating. Doesn't he sell like vitamins? Uh, he sells like everything. He sells like probably. I mean, so I'm assuming Doomsday shit, considering like, uh, what he what his whole uh, style of inserting paranoia into the American populace. Well, I guess online the world populace. Does that even make sense? <laughs> well, he's 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 looking like he's onto something with this uh, the whole Epstein sex cult, underage sex cult. No, not a cult, but whatever it was. He's sex trafficking. Yeah. Sex slaves. Sexual assault. And he had some island in the Caribbean that had questionable things happen that uh, certain people visited that uh, very powerful people wouldn't be very happy with him. Trying to make some sort of deal, possibly, if he could, because he's probably fa- was facing a life sentence, or a, I don't know. Do they have a death penalty in New York? I have no idea. Probably not. Let's find out. Let's kill somebody to find out. Well, it's just weird. It's, uh, I mean, it kind of makes sense. You knew that guy was going to die at some point. I'm not saying it was the Clintons, because I noticed on social media, like, everyone was having a good old time with the Clinton memes. Uh, like the last person to visit the cell, it's like Hillary with a mustache and sunglasses. Uh, so, uh, something. I mean, I just read today that the autopsy said like his neck bone was cracked, which is consistent with hanging yourself or like being strangled. And they're basically saying that uh, he wasn't on suicide watch. They took him off suicide watch, and then they had him under surveillance but then like a couple hours went by where they kind of just were like left him alone out of incompetence i guess and that's when he killed himself i don't know i think aaron hernandez was also like maybe not murdered by guards but like something was set up where he was taken out i mean it's happened before whitey bulger the guy from the departed was based on in that black uh black mass with johnny Depp. how did his cell door open and these guys come in and like gouge his eyes out I mean, someone had to be, like, on the take. So, I don't know. It's sketchy. It's cool, like, because pedophile died, but then it's, like, a lot of shit's not, we're not going to find out, like, a lot of stuff, probably. He's probably not the only one that that knew of things. Like, his... Well, everyone's saying the Clintons killed him because, like, Bill visited his island a bunch of times. There's pictures of him and Bill, and then people are saying Trump killed him, too, because, I don't know. Uh, I think something's amiss... I think people are, it seems like every kind of tragedy, people try to spin it, like, in their own direction. But, uh, yeah, you'd think, like, someone under, like, lockdown, 
killing themselves would be very far fetched, in my opinion. You can't ignore the high profile people that he was associated with that would not want to be revealed involved in this sex trafficking case. I bet it'd be a lot, a lot of politicians. And we'll see how many times it does it. Um, I mean, if I was him, I'd kill myself. Well, oh, yeah. Because, I mean, e- even if it wasn't brought on by somebody else, um, he was facing a lot of a lot of crap. A lot of he was gonna either die. Uh, I don't know. He was. It, 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 it probably he probably wouldn't have even made it to a trial before someone in prison got him. He would have been a badge of honor for somebody to get like initiated into a gang, whatever gang they may be. Like go stick him, go stick him like five times with a shiv or something. They they would they would they would separate him, but that's still. They would separate him. Like, they wouldn't put him in gen pop, probably, considering how high profile he is. And if it's sex trafficking, that might be... is that That's federal if it's across state lines, so he'd be in a federal prison. I, I, I don't know. Like, if a guy, like, tries to kill himself, like, why would you take him off suicide watch, especially somebody that high profile? I get if it's, like... uh um, your local pervert down the street who got caught, like, uh, you know, looking, running through the park, like, exposing himself to people, and he tried to kill himself. You'd, and he tried to kill himself. You'd maybe watch him for like a little bit, then not give a fuck. Wait, just do you think he killed himself, or do you think he was killed by somebody? Yes or no? You asked me two questions, and then you asked yes or no. Do you think he killed himself? Yes or no? No. You think someone killed him? <laughs> yes. Do you think he like slipped and fell into a noose and hung himself? <laughs> Do you think he slipped and fell into his his inmates? He didn't have no inmate. He he was by himself. All it takes is a guard. I know. I didn't see nothing. You know what? That proves it because the two didn't didn't the uh the the um, guards who oversaw his cell got reassigned. That's that's that that's pretty suspicious. They're throwing them under the bus. Like, it, look, they they screwed up and it's their fault. And it may be like they just yeah, not didn't do their jobs, didn't give a shit. I I, I mean, you go to a store, you see someone not give a shit about their job. So of course, like prison guards might not give a shit about some pedophile. <laughs> You know, I mean, you know who does do their job? Who? Amazon. You can't beat it whenever you order something, you don't like it, and then for whatever reason, you just ship it back, and it's just credited, money back. They don't ask any questions. So you can get a, a package, a big package, a huge package, delivered to your back door, and... uh Makes you, a mess out of, over over you, everything. You could say I was uh, chugging Nyquil when I ordered this, and I don't want it. But obviously, don't say that when you send it back, and they'll be like, "Sure." I don't think it matters. I think you could say but I changed my mind. <laughs> I, you could. Pro- I don't know. I I kind of want to test that theory. I want to order something, and just try to. I was under the influence when I bought this. I opened it. I broke it, and it doesn't work anymore. And I don't want it. <laughs> and see if they'll return my money. You're gonna disclose that all that information. Yeah, I want. I want to see. I want to test the limits. You're gonna say I was under the influence and I broke this. <laughs> I want to so. test the limits. I want to see if they actually care. You, you think s- they do? That might be a little too far. Um, I want. I, I want. <laughs> you think I, it's just some robot that just like uh, returns? Send they or, don't have time to question my to question uh, people's morals. Is Amazon has time for that. Does Amazon have morals? No. Does Jeff Bezos have morals? No money. Money? Make money. I think he's got that green. I, do I think he's he listening to us through Alexa? Do you have an Alexa in your house? Uh, I'm not going to disclose that. <laughs> and if I do, it's not functioning or it's not uh, set up to spy on me. Hmm. I have had an Alexa. I did use one at one time. It's, it's fun to say, play uh, this song or play this album. It's fun to say, what's the weather? Give me the news headlines. It's pretty lazy, though. Yeah. When all I have to do is just type it. 
or hit an app. Like to check the weather, all I have to do is type an app or press a press a, a but one button. Too, too, no, no, it's too much. <laughs> I don't have time for that. I'm old school that way. I mean, it's going to come to a point in time where we're just going to blink and like information is going to come to us. It's going to. It's either going to be Bezos or Apple or I don't know. Like it's like a it's like an arms race. Like who can like take over and can <laughs> take over your life more. I don't know. I, I I think before it comes to that, there, there's going to be a step backwards. I think I think people are are starting to. Like it's it's way too much, man. It's way 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 too much. It's over. It's con, It's content overload. It's it's advertising overload. Um, they just have a Prime Day recently, or Prime Week, or some shit. Yeah, I participated in that. I, I, I didn't. I usually do though. I, I must have. Now I'm not old school where like I will only buy stuff at the stores. I'm not that old school. Does anybody go to stores anymore? I don't know. Well, the, the ones that are still open, maybe. I mean, have you been to a mall recently? When was the last time you've been to Even a mall? Even when I was 15, I, did, I, did, I hated the mall. I did. I went to the mall like to hang out and like be a dumbass in front of girls and I, stuff. I, I was the kids never, still do that? I was never a mall rat. No, I don't think so. I think no. they just do it online. Yeah. They do yeah. it. They do, remember, they, they do the, it. remember the Dave Chappelle sketch? <laughs> if the internet was, was, was real life and it was just like a, a mall. Yeah. And they said a guy constantly selling uh, Viagra. It was, it was porn. It was like different versions. It was just constant. Yeah. And I just remember, man, just bought. I just stole a bunch of, bunch <laughs> of out, bunch of bunch of music, and he had like bags of it. <laughs> Napster. Yeah, I remember that dude. He he was ahead of his time. He man. really was. I still think of stuff that, yeah, that was from Spell Show, and. Yeah, he was. He's something else, man. He really is. But I remember, I me, I remember going to uh, the mall a lot when I was a kid. And I guess like some punk ass bitch is gonna listen to this and think I'm old. But it was just like something to do. They drop you off. You go smoke in the parking lot and walk around with your chain wallet. And you're, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just don't see that happening. I remember like Hot Topic being like a legit cool store, and now it's like. You got that from Hot Topic. It's like the poser, poser like wanna be badass goth. I mean, goth and badass does that go together? I don't know. I mean, you go there, it's just like a t shirt, t shirt place. I don't know much. when the last time I was in a mall. Spencer's, remember Spencer's? I do remember Spencer's. I, they still have Spencer's. I, I, I mean, I've been to the mall a few times recently in the past few years, a few years, and yeah, Spencer's, they got the sex toys in the back and all like the wacky party shit. That's still. That's like, ooh, let's go to Spencer's. Oh, look how naughty we are. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> um, penis pumps and dildos and stuff. Little kids in. <laughs> I mean, serious, they do. There's no age restriction on Spencer's. Then you got a bunch of pot shirts. Like, oh, I smoke pot. Like, where are you going to wear that at? Uh, concert? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. A pot, smoking pot? I'm really surprised that all that stuff. I don't know. I feel like malls will survive it, it, to some extent but why do you say that why are you 100 percent sure malls will be well around? it's real estate it's real and and i think i had the idea a while back over like christmas time that that's when malls make sense christmas time and that's pretty much it i, I can't tell you how many times these past few christmases where i just got shit off amazon well, yeah. I didn't even fuck it. And it was like last minute. Who gives a shit? Pay some extra money to have it shipped on time. Boom, boom, boom. Go to the mall. Fight people. I mean, I guess you got to sit on Santa's lap. They got that at the mall. They got the Easter Bunny at the mall. Well, that just proves that people still go to the malls because they're still crowded at Christmas time. Yeah, but yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, what about the rest of the year, though? That's what I mean. It's like they should only oh, it should only be seasonal <laughs> for like uh, November and December. Yeah, I don't know how that works. You got a two month of the year job. Well, I'm just saying, like the malls are real estate. Like it's just it's just property. You could put something else. Put in restaurants. Put in some clubs. Yeah. Have uh have the, have wrestling events. Have uh. Well, I met Goldberg at a mall. They had Goldberg do a signing at a mall when I was. They a used to have wrestling in in. Uh, and some I don't know if it was a one-off thing or if it was a weekly thing. They used to have wrestling and, and just some anything that gets that you can use the real estate. You know, just use the use the space without not necessarily the stores, but like you know, just the 
the big open space. And you can have, like you said, signings there. Um, but it's probably pretty expensive to keep in operation throughout the year if you're just going to have one-off events. Heck, you well, can have concerts there. Yeah. Parties. Like a private parties. Yeah. Like a hall. Yeah. I mean, they got the food court. They got, I mean, what, typical mall stores. I said Hot Topic, Spencer's, Forever 21, Abercrombie and Fitch, Lane Bryant. Or Amazon. Seeker. Or Amazon should just make deals with those malls and just. Well, how many times do you go and see something at a mall or a store and just go order it online cheaper? I do it a lot. I know a lot of people do it as well. Yeah, but sometimes Amazon you don't get the good, you you don't get the same quality. Or it's just it's the same like if it's if it's like something that's like a name brand or something that cuz I notice I notice that especially on the first two pages it's just like Google like Amazon makes partnerships with certain companies and certain products and they'll push that to rank higher and that's not necessarily what you're looking for sometimes. And sometimes they don't carry everything that's a good point um so it's just the more i don't know the more like you said back to morals you know i read that like car dealerships are suffering like our generation and generation coming up they don't like go to car dealerships like the like gen x's and baby boomers did to go get like taken advantage of by some guy with slick back hair like they order the fucking car online or they buy some used car don't give a fuck you can buy a car from a um it's like a vending machine i don't (laughs) don't know if they have them in this area they'll they'll bring it to your house well i saw i saw i saw um i saw it advertised in a commercial but i thought it was fake because i i didn't think uh they had it in this area and then i saw one in uh, arizona like those things are for real it's it's a it's a real life car it's a it's a vending machine it's a big tall building it's clear it has cars in it and then you really like legit have to buy it and go through the paperwork but once you get that they give you a big coin and you put it in and then it brings your car down what's going to happen to the car salesman anybody think about them they're just a a go-between a middleman they're just an aggressive person with a shiny gold tooth i mean it's a lot of money to spend just to hit one click of a button yeah but do you want some guy like trying to con you like i mean you know, I'll throw in a paint job, and it's like, well, that that that's free anyway. Or uh, you won't have to pay sticker price. Well, I wasn't going to anyway, dumbass, you know. Yeah, I mean, until people are smart. I mean, that's good and bad to get your own financing. Um, it's definitely more inconvenient, but comes down to it. You can save yourself some money. Well, I think what <clears throat> was going to save the dealerships, well, I said no new cars. Like in the old days, all oh, look at me with my. I mean, people still want badass cars. They're always gonna want badass cars. They're always gonna want to fucking fly down the highway and, and and be fast and furious and all that shit. But what's gonna save dealerships is that no credit, bad credit, no problem. You get some car for like a month and it's repossessed. That's what's gonna save car dealerships versus. Well, that's, that's still happening. That's been happening. I'm just saying, yes, but that's what's gonna keep them relevant versus the whole token thing. Because not everyone's in a position to get a car that way without doing some shady agreements. So you're talking about like lower class. Wow. I mean, well, you're saying. I mean, it's not a class thing. I guess it's just anybody who needs a car doesn't have the finances for it. Like the low credit, low credit, no credit, no money down, um, and that's really not a smart way to buy a car. No, but like, yeah, shit, you get desperate, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, shit. I I've been desperate. I've been I've had to buy two cars at one time. Unless you can do that online with uh, what you were talking about, where they can cut you a deal like that, and then basically fucking rape you on uh, interest, then those dealerships will will still be around because there's always going to be somebody who needs a car in a pinch, and doesn't and isn't isn't prepared to make that purchase because shit happens my last car was a pretty easy buying experience because a lot of it is online a lot of it i think people like to do the research online like even when i'm in a store this is not car related but even when i'm in a store um i like to look it's it's mainly for reviews even a salesman can't tell you that like whatever this product is you know what what are the amazon or whatever what are the reviews? Which you, is ter- which is good and bad. Do you, do you trust reviews though? Do you think I don't know. Do you think they're manipulated at all? I I, I tend to do I, t- I tend to read like more than one page of reviews to see if it's 
and consistent, consistent, like a, consistent like theme. Yeah, but that it, but that's a terrible trap to fall in because anything it's almost like anything in two thousand in, in this day and age. Some people are gonna say it's good. Some people are gonna say it's the worst product they've ever used in their entire life. But now a lot of people say, "Yeah, hey, it was okay." It's like a movie or an album. Yeah, or exactly. Anything. Some people are gonna love it. Some people are gonna hate it. Exactly. Nothing's ever perfect. But I and mean, you can drive yourself crazy just reading reviews. So you do your research online and you go in prepared, and you basically say, "This is what I want." Shut the fuck up, person trying to fucking screw me over. Well, well, the one thing you have to do at the dealership is do go for a test drive. If you buy a car without test driving it, that's that's not. I mean. Just don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. So, so back to my, it was pretty easy. I did all my research online and um, played a little hardball. You played hardball? I mean, just like with our interest. Yeah. Like not, not financial interest, but our personal interest. You're like, yeah, I don't balls. know. We're not, up. Oh, we're oh. not super interested. We might. And then, oh, well, why don't you come in and do this and do that? And that's kind of. Was the guy aggressive? Uh, we've we've bought a car from him before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you said, here comes my summer home payment as you drove in? Yeah, pretty much, even though it was, it was a pretty used car. Was we used. did it right. No, we did it. We, we, it, was, it was used. It was low, low mileage. Not, low mileage, high, no, high, high mileage, low price. That's what we, we wanted to go with, the lower payment. And we put a nice down payment on, so it wasn't too bad. But it was a pretty easy experience. A lot better than our first time when we didn't know what anything about you have nobody helping you because it's it's such a shitty deal because I think the first time we had no idea what we wanted we just went in I don't know all this look, oh that guy this. probably got an erection when he knew that he was yeah. like all right I'll tell <sighs> you what you, you want yeah but being being older and wiser we went in with the car we wanted we knew at the price we worked backwards we 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 even you wrote down a figure on a piece of paper. You slid it across the table. No, but we even said like, "Yeah, we'll bring our own financing." I'm like, "Oh, we'll we'll get you a good deal. We'll get you a good deal." It's comparable. So, this guy a sponsor for us? <laughs> <laughs> Come on down to Big Dream Car. Do 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 do. I love those car ads where it's like, you know, my accountant screwed up and we got all these cars and they got to go. It's like, dude, you got to fire your fucking accountant or whatever. <laughs> That's a big fuck up where you got to basically give all these cars away. Which is preposterous. Anyway, it's just a you know, so the mullet people go down and um, the, 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 get uh, fifty percent interest. I can see. <laughs> we we should even just say it because it's it's well known. If if you listen to the radio, you know you know what commercial I'm talking about, right? I think I do. The the, the fuck. Who gives a fuck? Should we, should we slander company to the three people who are going to listen to this? Here, the, the, no, no, here's the thing. I know what you're going to say. And on the last uh, garbage station I was on, that exact ad agency did the exact same ad with a 1920s uh, talk like a baby theme. And it was for a local dealership in the southern Illinois shithole area. And uh, so they have one here in St. Louis. And I saw it on Facebook, and every comment was, fuck this ad, fuck this ad. That's what I mean. Fuck this company, fuck this uh, place. But they know, they know, that, I mean, they know who they are. We I mean, don't have to say any, you know. This ad and this theme. We don't want to burn that many bridges yet. Wait, this uh, ad and theme has been going on for years, multiple years. Well, the I same, I mean, it's the same, it's different ads, but the same generalized theme that's annoying as hell. And I swear to God, it's on every single commercial break. You're not talking about the specific 20s theme, like the yeah. Um, that's it. Well, I love how in our South they're doing the exact same fucking thing. You know what I mean? I, uh, with another like a, with another dealership, and but you know what? I, I, it's working. It has is to it be though? working. Oh, it has to. It, it, if if yeah, there's they'd pull them, I guess, if it didn't work. Yeah, that's what I mean. What we're talking about, without getting too specific, is it is a period piece. And it's basically this car dealership, and it's one of those ads you hear a million times that gets stuck in your head, and you end up fucking hating it. And they do the exact same thing on a different dealership, like I said, an hour south of the where I used to work. We ran the ads. I thought they were creative, but then after, the more I heard them, the more I'm like, I want to fucking shoot this fucking computer. And it's just, it's, cons I, it's, 
like I said, I think every commercial break it's it's being played. That's uh, well, okay. So if you were that business and you paid X amount of dollars to have it advertised, and then I guess this was on Facebook, and you go through these comments, and the whatever radio station did this, they I'm sure they got rid of the comments. But if you saw that. What would you say? Would you say at least people know who I am? Or would you say they hate my... Because people are like, you fuck this ad. I turn the fucking radio every time I hear it. Like, that would make me upset. <laughs> yeah, but they're getting money from them. I mean, no. I mean, you're the owner of the dealership. Oh, oh And yeah. you're seeing people say, when I hear your ad, I change the fucking station. But yet, 5,000 views, 300 comments... That's not bad. I mean, I don't know. You you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> maybe we need we need to record a annoying ad for the podcast. Yeah, the show. You don't say podcast. That's amateur shit. We're professionals. We can do whatever we want. Uh, We're not professionals. <clears throat> don't play by the rules. Where's the rule book? I'm gonna break break it. Break Actually, it. several podcasts kind of play that angle. Like we don't care about rules. We're not going to say anything. Oh We're yeah, gonna, fucking gonna press record and, and go. Yeah, just I'm sure so that, that's like a style too. That's real interesting. I'm sure everyone's so so fascinating that way, right? I'm not saying it's a bad podcast, but it's just that who does that? It's like an apathetic theme. Name drop. Um, oh, the I don't give a shit podcast. No, it's that one dude. He's actually really funny. He's a really funny comedian. Um, he's got long hair. He was in a sitcom. This is a great story. It's actually funny. I don't remember his name. But he has his own podcast. It's pretty popular. Comedian has their own podcast? Are you serious? <laughs> what fucking comedian doesn't have a podcast? I mean, Stone Cold Steve Austin has a podcast. I love him. I was watching him today. Did you watch the wing thing? Him eating wings? It's no. a, it's like a TV show. Or not TV show. It's like a YouTube series where they eat. It's like... It's a thirty-minute show, and they eat wings, and the guy like and, and like goes up in heat every wing they eat, and like then, man versus food or whatever kind of thing. But like or, the like the spin is like it's just a pod, or it's like a show. Don't say the p word. It's like a show where they you know interview. It's a show. Hey, tell us about this time. Tell us about that time. But in between, they eat wings. The I think topics, I've, I've they, seen they that. eat one wing, and it starts like the spice level goes up every single wing. Well, what I saw was him and Rob Riggle some show where they oh were, his actual show they were doing like Marine Army shit and it was, was good. I mean, he's just like driving around and going. Rah, rah, rah. I'll tell you what, man. Yeah, I can't do an impression of him, but I'll tell you what, this so bitch could go do that. I mean, he's a, knife, this, yeah, that, that. and Rob Riggle being Rob Riggle or whatever. I mean, hey, yeah, that's great. And I'm I, talking to Stone Cold. Pretty much, like sounds it, like a wrestling. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we're gonna blow this shit up. I like Rob Riggle, but he's uh pretty much one trick pony. There's nothing wrong with being a one trick pony. A lot, of, a lot of those guys are. Look that teat, man. You know what's funny? Like that whole clique, that whole gang, the Kansas City gang. He's he's, he's part of the Kansas City gang, isn't Who's he? Who's in the Kansas City gang? Him and um, Keckner and uh, Paul Rudd and I know Jason Sudeikis is from. Kansas you know what I'm saying? City. They were at, they were all at a uh, Kansas City something. Kansas uh, City game uh, is either Royals or the Chiefs. Yeah, uh, because he, it's, it's like the theme, like on the NFL. Yeah. He always roots for the Chiefs. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they're. From, I'm assuming they're from there. That's why. But there's he like five from, of them. He is from Kansas City. He said that in uh, on the show with Stone Cold, and they talked about seeing Motley Crue and Ozzy, and someone threw up on Stone Cold, and uh, I feel sorry for that person. <laughs> what the hell is this? Yeah, it hurts my voice talking like Stone Cold. Got to pound like twenty beers. Oh yeah, he was saying that uh, he used to get buzzed. Obviously, doing that. I thought it was N.A. I thought I remember seeing a can <laughs> on the fall, Jumbotron. Well, a can fall to the side, and it was N.A. And like JR's like, cut away, cut away. <laughs> I was getting too fucked up. But he's like a legit, what quote unquote redneck. It's legit. not. It's not a character. I thought that, that was like a character after all these years. That's. I read like an uh, interview with Rolling Stone like back in the day when he was like blowing up and it was just basically him like DUIing it all over Texas while they like <laughs> I'm not joking. He was just like pounding alcohol, driving over this guy around while he <laughs> interviewed him. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, if I got hit by somebody, I hope it's Stone Cold Steve Austin, not just because I can sue him. <laughs> Imagine, like, getting out of your car and being like, fuck you. Oh, shit. Like, watch where you fucking going. 
<laughs> just like blasted out of his mind. <laughs> just like stu- gives you a fucking stutter. The cops show up. It's like, oh my god, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Is this guy bothering you? You're like twitching on the side of the fucking road. So, so we're we're gonna get we're gonna drive get, safe. We're gonna get yeah. <laughs> don't drink and drive. So we're gonna get nerd like. Was 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 Stone Cold your favorite wrestler? The Rock when he was a bad guy. Well, the Rock as a heel was my favorite wrestler. And like when he was in the, the Nation. No, when he was in the corporation or whatever. Oh, okay. That's when I liked The Rock the most. And then he became a good guy, and then everyone kind of turned on him, and then he went and made movies. Now he's in Hobbs and Shaw, which everyone likes. I don't know if it, just, no one likes anything. I'm reading complaints about Hobbs and Shaw. It's like, what do you want? Like, what did you expect? You I, see the preview. He's going down an elevator on the side of a building. Uh, Jason Statham, The Rock, is fighting someone as he falls down the building. You expected this to be an Academy Award winning film. Like, what do you expect? How do people, how do people, I mean, I guess we're on like the lowest of the lowest of the lowest totem poles. Like how, how does any content creator of any, not even content, any creator of anything, why do it? It's like, you're just going to get shit. I mean, for a payday, I'm assuming that's why the people, they, they do it. But any aspiring, you know, not established creator do anything in this day and age. Well, like if if I was The Rock, I would read those comments and then I look at my bank account and laugh. That's, I said not established. Well, you're not established. People don't hold you that high of a standard. They don't ex- they don't expect that no much. No way. Out of you. Any, anything if you're you put, indie, any, people think you're cool because no one knows put, who you are. Anything you put on YouTube, though, just anything could be any, it could be the dumbest or the most like passive, nonchalant thing ever. You're gonna get these these bots that could be from Russia, could not be Russia. <laughs> it's like the, his, his handle is Trump is King 47. I get porn bots all the time. I get like these chicks that look like they're like 18 and 19, 20 professional models or porn stars. They have 19 friends. <laughs> they just started their page and then they start asking ask questions and it just gets old. I must be on some list. Or Wait, I, those are bots? Yeah. Well, Talk to him for a while. Eventually, it gets to a part where money starts being discussed. Well, you paid for porn at some point. At some point, they ask you to like send them money and shit. It's like some guy in the Ukraine, like chain smoking, and his fucking wife beater sitting there up by his laptop. It's like a Las Vegas stripper in in bot form. Yeah, except it's not. Except, except it's not like a stripper. It's it's someone in like India or like the Middle East. They're also not real though, so you can just. Well, you could say, like, leave me alone and block them. Like, if you're at a strip club, you can't really block a stripper. I guess you could. You could say, don't touch me. You could, I, don't, I don't want a lap dance from you. You're ugly. Yeah, but then they can give you, like, this said lap dance and then drug you and take your money well, like that new J-Lo movie. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. There's, It's a true story. I remember hearing on Howard when it happened, like, years ago. These strippers drugged these rich people and, like, stole their money. And like J Lo's in it with a, a bunch of other famous. She's a stripper. People. Yeah, what a stripper she would be too. She's a stripper at her age in no, this movie, dude. She's hot as fuck, man. No, she, she's fifty, man. It doesn't. She's fifty, that's dude. She's point. hotter than most people. Look at J Lo, man. J Lo's hot as fuck, dude. I'd rather see J Lo than half these other chicks, man. I'm for real. Plus, she knows how to dance, so she'd be a great stripper. And if she actually drugged me and took my money, I would laugh because there'd be nothing to take. And I would just be so happy that I had that ass in my face. But I find it's like some movie that's supposed to be empowering where like Cardi B, who actually did drug people and take their money and, you know, is in it. So you rob people. Is that like, you know, you got daughters like, hey, this is an inspiring film. You know, don't let any man get you down. Like stick your tits in his face and like steal his money. I guess, like, if you go to a strip club, is that fair game? Like, that's on you, man? Like, don't trust a stripper. What the hell's wrong with you? I'd like to think that you could, like, negotiate some sex act or a, a private dance without, like, fear of, like, your credit card. That's what they did. I'm, I'm getting confused. Cardi B would drug people, but she's in this movie where they take their credit cards and, like, run them up. They would run them up. Like ten thousand dollars, you get your bill. You're all, like, fucking drunk. You're not paying attention. Right. <laughs> so, yay, women, right? That probably happens a lot, but not to that extent. Well, what do you do about it, though? If you're married and have a family, are you going to, like, go make a big deal about it? Like, fight it? Your wife looks at your credit card bill. It's at $10,000. Suckos. Like, you, <laughs> hey, oh, what did you drop ten grand at Sauce, Illinois, for? <laughs> oh, man. I'd be in so much trouble. 
cash only, man. I would. Uh, you yeah. Got, uh, should you be able? That's to the smartest way to do. I don't. I. I don't go to a lot of strip clubs. I've been a few, uh, but just cash only. This is all I got. I don't trust. After those it's strippers. gone, it's gone. I don't trust those strippers though. No. Like I don't go like, oh, you're my friend. Like those people that are like, oh, they like me. It's like you're, you're sad. They don't like yeah. you. They don't give a shit about you. And then they're like, oh, they're in the parking lot. And they got this big giant fucker like walking into their car because of you, because of you, because you want to run up to them and go, oh, I love you. <laughs> yeah, that movie. I don't know what that movie's called. I saw a preview for it, and if it's rated R, I'll hopefully they'll show. I mean, J Lo's probably above showing nude scenes she see, pro- she probably wouldn't do it so you don't think hollywood will pull that one? Oh yeah no but that other movie got pulled man it yeah i know completely pulled the one we talked about in the other podcast about uh elite liberals hunting deplorables now it was pulled probably because they knew it, and it pulled for now like they still may release it. Like, remember the interview? The, all I was that, just gonna say, yeah, the interview got a lot of backlash too. But they released but that it was still. like, that was like international. This is like domestic. Well, that wasn't just international. That was Sony, man. Like Sony did that to themselves. Like someone at Sony leaked all that shit, and like leaked people like talking shit about Obama and saying racist shit. Like uh, her name was Amy Pascal. She had to step down, and like all these movies that like remember on seinfeld where they got their show signed and then like the guy like joined greenpeace and then someone like took over and was like i don't like your show yeah. that happened to like a shitload of people yeah like johnny happens. knoxville had some movie about like some amusement park that like got shelled and like it got released but like they put no money behind it and disney just canceled a bunch of uh fox what movie ideas oh i'm I just, just she's these shit movies that they that sucks for them. Yeah, but they weren't. It was like a Mega Man movie. It was just all just reboots and 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 like at least that was in the news. I'm sure there were others, but do you think that's uh, free speech though? Like, if you want to make a movie about that subject matter, should it be should it be shelved because a politically controversial and b obviously you know gun violence right now is a hot topic. I mean, when the, when the plot is killing those said people, that's like a real life issue, or can be a real life issue. I don't know. I I would I would caution on the side of not releasing it. Like me as a, if I was making a movie, I would choose probably not to make a film like that, because I'd realize that it would be like. But then they didn't realize these shootings would happen. They thought, oh, everyone's gonna get all freaked out, and it'd be a bunch of buzz. Just bad timing. People would go see it because it'd be like controversial, but it's too controversial to the point where we can't do it. <laughs> Plus, I think networks like ESPN was refusing to run ads for it, so I think that had a, it, this had a lot to do with it. So either it'll be distributed online, probably, or they'll wait a couple of years till this shit dies down. And that's Bloomhouse. That's a pretty that's legit big indie. But that's legit. That's, that's not I'm pl- saying it's not like a some some no name some Rob Zombie shit, <laughs> Saving Films or whatever. <laughs> the Jim Carrey serial killer movie. I guess they shouldn't have made it so on the nose. I mean, what do they think? Like, even if even if these these latest shootings didn't happen, what do they think? They thought that people would freak out about it and go see it because it'd be a lot of buzz. Like the conservatives would be up up in arms, and and then everyone would be like, "Oh, it's just art. It's just art. Chill out, chill out. You guys are sensitive. You guys are sensitive." And then they go see it just in spite of. The fucking conservatives and make a shitload of money, and then maybe it might actually be like a decent film on top of it. But yeah, that was the idea, and it was not uh, like you said, right, right time for that, considering what's happened. It might cause some sort of sick fucking reaction, probably at this point. Yeah, could be like uh, I mean, there's there's still there's still more uh, shootings happening. I feel like every week, so. I mean, I don't know if it would increase that or or if it would be more like uh, public, like this is why, this is why, this is why. I just don't get like the thought process behind that. Like, let's make the movie about this. I mean, I get like what I just said, like why they did it, but like morally why you would do it. Like you're encouraging both sides to possibly be like, you're stirring the pot. I get financially and like marketing wise, but like morally, like 
You're a piece of shit. And they're on the side of on they're on they're on the side of I guess we'll say it's not the spectrum. We'll just say they're on the liberal side, so they feel like they could probably get away with it. Well, yeah, because if a conservative made a movie about that, it wouldn't be shut down. Like it probably wouldn't even make it past like the pitch, right? Um, which is fine. But then why is it okay? I mean, we know Hollywood's liberal. It's just the way it is. I'm not like freaking out about it, but it's just like it's upsetting to me that like someone made it like someone decided to make a movie like that. But at the same time, I'd probably watch it <laughs> and I'd probably go see it. I can separate. I yeah. can separate because, like I said in another previous show, uh, if if you can't handle politics or whatever. If you're like so anti-liberal that you can't handle movies, then you'll never watch a fucking movie or TV show. Right. It's just the way it is. Conservatives don't do media very well outside of Fox News. Now, if certain guns were banned, actually, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You, it, it, you try to take my guns from me? <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing about that. If the government wanted to take the, your guns from you, you wouldn't stand a fucking chance, you fucking rednecks. If the army came marching through the street and we're like, we're taking your guns, and you're like, not my AK, like, you'd be dead, like, in two seconds. Like, it'll, it'll never happen. No, it won't happen. It'll never happen. Even if even if it wasn't, um, you know, the NRA wasn't in bed with the politicians. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, like, that'd be something like 1984 shit. I could imagine not getting in an argument with somebody in the parking lot and then lifting my shirt up to let them know I was armed for them to back the fuck off. Like, I just, I don't want to live in a world like that. I don't want to live in a world. You do. (laughs) That could happen. I don't want to live in a world where someone's riding my ass and I flip them off and I can't wave this and fire it back at them. I don't want to live in a world like that. I don't. (laughs) It's my right. It can happen, though. It's my right to shoot a family member in the middle of the night because I'm so fucked up I can't tell what's going on. It's my right. (laughs) It's my right to uh, not be able to find my gun when there's an actual shooting going on. <laughs> and that's the thing. Like, how often are you able to access your gun? When that, some- th- yeah, that's always the argument. Well, I have this to protect from intruders. But well, what? unless it's loaded by your nightstand right next to you. That's just a bad idea. Even if, you, <laughs> even if you're trained. You got a gun, like, in every room of the house? That's what I mean. <laughs> even if you're trained and it's right next to you loaded, that's probably the only scenario where, like, you could stop an intruder in my point of view. I've never, I've never been, uh, just get security like a ADT and then they'll break into your house. They, <laughs> yeah. Then they'll, then they'll, the home alone guys, Joe Pesci. And, uh, I thought you're going to say the technology companies will, will, will figuratively break into your house and spy on you. Well, yeah, that too. I don't care about that. I don't care. I got nothing to hide. I just got my weird sex life, but if they want to watch that, then, well, that'll make it even better. Guns are involved in that, too. Oh, yeah. Safety safety first. No for props. My dildo gun. Oh. (laughs) No, I don't know. But back to my point, it doesn't matter what it is. Gun, uh, I don't know, microwaves. I mean, can you imagine anything that where the government says you are not allowed to have this we are we're going to march down the street and collect this from you that's you don't think that's going to happen with the internet eventually where they're going to fucking like uh, i know like i can make a video and upload it like eventually they'll take that away probably i mean they won't march down the street and knock on your no, they might knock, knock, knock on your door but um eventually eventually down. the this will be the it'll be regulated like radio tv oh for sure we got some like that's bald, like, that, that's you got the, some bald guy like with a cigar in his mouth uh making decisions from like half a country away that's been that's been i don't know i I don't know if it'll be so much regulated it'll just be controlled to where you're gonna have to pay a premium the shitty companies are gonna like put juice behind things where like normal people won't be able to compete with probably you know what i mean i mean that's been the fear for years that it's gonna turn into uh you know tiered access Almost like how streaming services are, where if you want this site, access to this site, you're going to have to choose this company that owns it. Like uh, like a cable package, kind of. Yeah, right? like I say, yeah. Warner Media buys yeah. YouTube. Ooh, yeah. Like, I mean, so that's ha- sh- that, yeah, yeah. That's that, that, that could definitely happen. Yeah. That's I as, so, as soon as uh, Silicon Valley stops making so much money, you know, these companies stop making so much money, they're going to be desperate and they're going to they're going to be sellers. And all it takes is a Warner or a Disney. Can you imagine? What's Disney's on a roll? Why stop now? 
I keep going. How much money does that fucking Walt Disney need to unfreeze him to find out whatever disease he has? Isn't he frozen, Walt Disney? That's the rumor. I don't think it's a rumor. I think he's legit frozen. I mean, unless you've seen him, then it's a rumor. Well, unless you've seen like his actual head frozen or whatever. His head, his head's not frozen. Wasn't that a Simpsons joke? That was on something where like he was frozen. It was just his head. I think it was like an itchy, scratchy kind of thing. Maybe, maybe. No, I think he seriously had some illness. Is this Tom Hanks play Walt Disney in some movie? I think did, so. did not cover that. Did not cover that he was an anti Semite. <laughs> he was. He. He. I think he did was. Did you know him? Well, in nineteen twenty, no. <laughs> No, I've never met Walt Disney, to be honest with you, and he's not even in charge anyway because he's frozen, allegedly. It's Eisen... What the fuck's his name? Is he even in charge anymore? Was he ousted? Who's in charge of Disney? Who, who's... who's who? I don't know. Michael Eisner? Remember that guy? I think that was years ago. So he's done. So who's who's running the ship? Probably everyone a needs, robot. Everyone needs a master. It's probably you the person... Be, you got Bezos running Amazon, Zuckerberg running Probably the Facebook. person who's... Buy it! Just buy it! Acquire it. Probably the guy who like fucking. Oh, this is good. Acquire it. Threatened threatened Hulu and stuff to <laughs> merge. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, it's a good beer. I just saw Spectrum's brewing with uh, Disney and Hulu. What do you mean? Well, they were gonna they were gonna lose some Disney channels, so uh, they partnered with them. So if you got Spectrum, which is an app, which I know somebody who has this, they don't have cable, they just have. Like a Roku in the app Spectrum, you get the you get the option of Hulu and Disney with it. Like you get yeah. the key, that's part of like them you, keeping the channels or something. Do you know what? This is just going to come crashing down. What this this such our show? <laughs> <laughs> yep, sorry. My, my self esteem. No, and well, it's just going to be a, a. I shouldn't say that. It's just going to be a selective few. People are just going to go back to pirating things. Ah, pirating. It's just bullshit that. Put on the eye patch and steal the show. In, in a way, it's good. In a way, it's bad. Do you think that the consequences for pirating are a little severe? Are there still consequences? No. Do you think that? No, there are still consequences. Do you think they're severe? They getting a fucking million dollar fine like some people got over the downloading shit. Uh, it just depends. I mean, Jesus Christ, really? That, a million dollar fine? Or I like, always thought that was just to scare somebody. Well, they make an example out of somebody, and <laughs> oh no, you know. I mean, if you were down, if you were downloading and distributing, maybe. I think it's a distributing part. You're right. I was just going to say that. Distributing you, is a whole other like, animal. If you have like a hub, if you're like your own distribution, like mm -hmm. video, if you're if you're doing your own Netflix that's all pirated, maybe. But if no one distributed, then how would you download? I don't know. Someone's got to, just like drugs, someone's got to sell them. But, the, but, I mean, until you take away, I think the only thing you could take away is like live sports. But anything after that can be can be pirated. And, you know, these streaming services are going to start holding people hostage. I mean, that goes back to people like stealing cable. If you Yeah. So you steal streaming services. You get someone's uh, password. You log in on uh, Netflix, and then your friend's got the same password. He logs in. Like, You know what I mean? Yeah, not so much that. They can crack that down easily. but uh, They could, but they don't. Yeah, sure they do. They can, they can track your IP. Or they can they can only limit. Are you allowed to have multiple people on your account though? You should be able to. I think certain services, they probably don't from like different locations. North Dakota and Alabama. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something's obviously a miss there. <laughs> I just it, it, as long as there's a free open internet that people find a way to, to crack it, and not, and not so much that, but just find ways to see these shows. Yeah. Like I said, you can't really do that with live sports. Not live. You can do it like after the after they're over um but some of these shows though wouldn't have the audience they had if people didn't steal them i mean there's a lot of shows that i think i'm not saying a lot of people pirated it's always sunny in philadelphia but i think that's that's an example of a show that really struggled when it first came out and then i think once the original version the original setup of hulu where, like, before you had to pay and you could pretty much watch everything before they cracked down, like, that grew that show and that grew a bunch of shows like it where it developed a huge audience where people, like, tuned in for it on yeah, TV. Like, uh, Breaking Bad. That, that, perfect example yeah, right Breaking there. Bad survived perfect. because of Netflix. Perfect example. I think even the creator went on the record to say that. It's like we didn't do too good, like, our ratings, I guess, wise, the first or second season, yeah. but as soon as it got, I guess it was the third season, 
or third or fourth season and they just got so popular by then and it, it like it kept it on going a couple more seasons because of it yeah i mean i think like if someone has like not a lot of viewers it's not necessarily a reflection on the show i just think people access stuff differently now and back in like the 50s and 60s when you only had three channels shows would pull like 30 million viewers now they're lucky to pull in three million viewers but then they'll pull in another three to six online so i i think that's a good thing but at some point if you have a show but i guess like you get a couple seasons everyone steals it everyone watches it for free then like you know breaking bad those last two seasons they probably made a shitload of money all the actors and the creators it, they, that's when they that's when they chinged it it's just going way too far it's just it's it's you can't have it's almost too niche until like until they find a way to consolidate and this is years away because they're still they're still announcing streaming services i think we talked about it last time i think you talked about cb if cbs was going to fail because they didn't add viacom well guess what cbs and viacom are merging re-merging re -merging? well viacom owns cbs well they split but now they're they're oh they, really they split it one maybe not i don't know i can't remember what it i don't is. know but anyway so viacom owns mtv comedy central all, like a bunch of fucking channels that we like. So love. that is combining with CBS. That's what access. I said. Yes. Right. Yes. You, that's smart. They just announced that. That's fucking smart. Take Comedy Central off Hulu. All the shows off Hulu. So basically, it's just going to be like everything. Yeah. You might as well just have cable then. I mean, seriously. That's my point. That's until. Because then any MTV show that or Comedy Central show, or just like 10 more channels that I, I can't even think of. That you'd watch like on Hulu or Netflix. Now you got to get something else. But the problem, Good Lord. but the problem is, it, I think it's just going to going to turn into. Well, I'm just not going to watch that show anymore. People aren't going to buy. Pay, I've done that. I've pay, done that before. Pay ten dollars, or whatever nine, ten dollars just for a streaming service just to watch one show. Well, when you're paying for this already and this already and this already, I mean, it's almost like yeah, it's almost going to be a la carte. It's like. You have your, your five to six streaming services. Okay, what do you want to watch? Well, I got kids, so we're going to get Disney. Well, I like this show. Well, you're going to get this then. Uh, Sports, ESPN. Yeah, you, you need ESPN. lives. Yeah. I mean, the CBS All Access had the Twilight Zone, and it seemed like it was pretty shitty from what I read. But, I mean, I would have watched it, but there ain't no fucking way I'm going to watch it. I'm not paying for it. What it seemed like, and I think we talked about another time, was is you get a free month or whatever. And from the comments, everyone was doing that. They're signing up for a free week or whatever, then <clears throat> canceling it. So, again, like, if you did the Twilight Zone, they watch your show, but what is really accomplished? <laughs> right. And this is bound to happen. This Same is... thing with, like, Sirius XM. Sorry. Like, you get it in your car, you get, and then, okay, I got it for a month, and then I'm not, I'm not keeping it. Right. And it, it was bound to happen with, with, the cord cutting you know these 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 cable it's not even just cable it's it's the media conglomerates that control not control but own these these networks and entities once they stopped i mean i guess they got into the game with the the streaming apps the standalone streaming apps but ever since people shifted away from cable you knew there was a plan to to get it pretty much back to where cable was it's just it's it's an always uh it's ever ever changing medium it's just the content's different it's just it's like how, how can we make the most money you know like what 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 whoever makes the most money will survive and the jokes on them with the with the uh the upcoming up and coming uh recession so it's a, it's only a matter of time before uh some of these conglomerates go bankrupt and not even just a recession just the the point of with so many streaming services, people aren't people. A lot of people aren't going to have the money to buy a single one of them. Well, I think you'll see. I think Netflix will have something up their sleeve. I mean, this is no, this is no knowledge I have. I'm just assuming they're going to partner. Like you're going to see people merging, merging is what's going to happen, and it won't be like a monopoly. But you'll have Netflix partnering with God knows who, and then you have the Disney partnership with Hulu, and then. I mean, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. I think, I think, I, I, I think possibly I could see people like sort of join together, like Netflix, HBO joining forces, 
because it's going to get to a point where like CBS, Netflix, HBO, all teaming up because it's going to get to a point where like too much shit, like how can you compete with like some, some things, you know what I mean? I think it needs to happen. You don't need that many people producing content. You only need the selective four or five, maybe not even that many. We've come to the point where there's just too much. There's too many, too many shows. It's more about quantity, not quality. Like Netflix, for example, they're putting out all this, the Netflix originals, trying to get the next big thing. And they landed it with Stranger Things. I, th- I feel like that's their flagship show. Or at least or- Orange is the New Black was a flagship show. It's over now. It was, not anymore. Yeah. Did they end Stranger Things or are they still doing it? They're still doing it. I have watched like two episodes of that. I feel like that's probably their number one right now. That and, and Ozark. Ozark's more adult. They have uh, I guess Stranger Things is pretty adult too. They have Glow. That that's a big show. That's just, yeah. That's that's, just, that's not Orange. That's not a. Uh, it's the same people as Orange is the New Black. Right, right. But no, it's not as popular. But I just think I still don't know the structure model, the business model. With, they need with, to cut with, more deals with celebrities, like like they're doing with Letterman and Sandler. Like if they keep doing that, they have a fighting chance. Well, now and then Apple's trying to get in the game by doing that. See, that's where I'm like too much. There's no way I'm even going to give a shit about Apple. I can't. I can't. I'm in too deep with these other ones. I'm sorry. That, Apple, what if Apple has that one show that everybody's talking that's about? That's where I'll miss the show, or I'll, I'll find another way to watch it. I'll oh, watch no. They're, they're, the one they're toting is Steve Carell and I don't fucking give a shit Jennifer about Aniston. Well, she's hot. And like, they're running a, a news station. Uh, they're running a news station? Like a morning show. They're running like morning news. Good luck with that. Yeah. I mean, well... They're t- I think Apple's trying to become the new HBO. Listen. To put, put out quality content by the best of the best directors Steve and actors. Carell Steve Carell is the best Carell. of the best. Is, you, is there seriously... He's well known. Is there seriously a Steve Carell, Jennifer Aniston show? Yeah, I'm not lying. Oh, wow. That's like they're, the one they're promoting. And then Jason Momoa's in one. Is that like uh, where they're in space or something? I don't know. Jason Momoa's in one? Yeah. Oh, they came to play. They got some... That's, is Steven Spielberg's producing content for it? I'm See, telling you, they're, they're going to try to become Spielberg's the new Spielberg's a hypocrite, man. He bitched about Netflix movies oh, being nominated for Oscars, and now he's jumping on Apple. Money talks, bullshit walks. He needs to make a good fucking movie, man. He hasn't made a good movie in a forever. What was Ready Player One, the last one? That's arguably a good movie. Or I haven't not. seen it. I've heard bad things. I've heard good things. It depends on what you're into. I don't know if he even made it. He probably produced it. I thought that was like a Steven, like his his like return. Yeah, because it had all the Steven Spielberg characters in it. It was like an '80s thing. It was like the future. Yeah, but like somehow the '80s and the future. I don't know. It's just that's where I like. It was they like made a, a movie with about the '80s again. Yeah, wow, I know. Uh, the that's 80s. super original. Take on me. <laughs> wow. So in twenty years, and people look back, and even thirty years, look back at this time. <laughs> you're no, gonna see the '80s and '90s. <laughs> no one's gonna want to make a movie about fucking 2019. It's a miserable time. It's just it's, gonna be a reboot of a reboot. It's gonna be people walking around their iPads, can, can bling. iPads or iPads? I'm just thing? a reboot of a reboot of a, a reboot of a reboot. <laughs> That's what it's gonna be. That's pretty much what the song is, isn't it? Like, I mean, I'm nine mean, inch nails, guys. I think some series have rebooted at least twice. Do you know how many Spider Man movies there are? I know. My God. I know. It gets to a point. I mean, I'm still like stuck on the ones that came out with Tobey Maguire. God, those are the worst. I hated him as Spider Man. Spider Man's supposed to be a pussy, though. He's not supposed to be like a tough he guy. He is like this. He is. I off- just didn't like but him. But Tobey Maguire is off putting. He's off putting. I like the, the the new one, but he's just a kid. Is that Andrew? Uh, whatever. No, he's not the new one. He's done already. Well, Jesus. I- and there was one with Dennis Miller for some reason. Not Dennis Miller. Dennis Leary. He's like a cop. Yeah, he's in he's in the Andrew Garfield one. Who the fuck said let's have this fucking Dennis Leary guy here, chain smoking, alcoholic, Irish piece of shit? <laughs> I can say that because I'm Irish. I think this. I think the Sony Disney merger killed that that version of. It's just like no, you Dennis Leary. No, we're not doing this. He died. He died in the first one. Good. He smoked too much, probably. <laughs> what are you doing around with the Spider Man? I just like I don't get how some people like they go. Let's have this guy. Like who who. who like Jason Bateman, nothing against him. And I've had this discussion with several people. Who goes? We need the Jason Bateman for this movie. Who says that? 
who says I like tag and and horrible bosses? I like Jason Bateman. Who says we need Jason Bateman? We need we need someone you got who a just problem with Jason Bateman? brings level headedness. No, because he's amazing in Ozark. Because that's what I was gonna say. But he's the same guy. He's just like he's the rational guy. He's uptight. He's nervous. And then you got some Charlie Day character like doing weird shit. I never really watched Arrested Development though. To be fair, because that's where you've like, never seen Arrested. Oh, Development? Oh no, wait. I have seen it. I never watched it like consistently. I heard the Netflix version no, was a, a fucking that's a joke. Dump, that's a dumpster fire. Like they were, they weren't even on like on, on uh, c- camera together. They green screened half that shit. Like none of them filmed it together. I think the the first <laughs> like the that's first terrible season of the Netflix version. But then they made a second season. I think they even made a third season that I just I so that shit. And then Fuller House, and then like stuff like that. Like no Netflix, no bad. This is now what my thirteen ninety nine a month is for. Fuller House. So let's reboot. Let's reboot Full House and have Bob Saget and fucking Uncle Jesse. I think Jesse. we need to call that something different. That's not a reboot. That's like a resurrection. Like the Roseanne situation before she tweeted uh, racism. Yeah. It's not the reboot. It's just the resurrection. It isn't a reboot because you're right. It has the same people. Right. It's the the yeah the resurrection something that was dead. It's almost like Pet Cemetery. Like things are dead and you just need to leave them dead. Roseanne should have stayed dead, man. Like she wasn't meant for the social media. She age. has mental issues. She is crazy. Like, She's real, legit like, crazy. Yeah, real. She She's had like, like a car accident. Mm-hmm. Just say like head trauma or something. I read her. She had like split personality. Yeah, or something. she has something. And I heard uh, she really hates that Darlene chick. She really views her as the enemy and the whole her being ousted from the show. I, I mean, never watched Roseanne. Never cared for her. She's funny. To, I mean, she she's shows, entertaining. We'll say that the show's good. With she, I feel bad for saying this, but like the show is fine without her. The yeah. show, the show, I liked it when it was on in the eighties and nineties. It was really good because it wasn't your typical uh, some perfect family with like some great house and like for some reason they just have like all these nice things and it's never discussed. And they never have real world problems. And it showed like just white trash people, and it was like realistic. And they had like issues. Well, that started the trend of the of the of the white trash. Same people sitcoms. did that '70s show, like same mm. same people. So they brought it back, and like Wanda Sykes was involved in what's her face, God, Whitney Cummings, who just had some thing on Twitter where they, I don't really know what happened. They someone like posted a picture of her nipple. Yeah, mm. uh, she she looks like her face is fake, kind of. Yeah, she does. Like she's funny though. She is funny. She's she's. I've seen her on the comedy. You shouldn't comment her. about her look. She's a comedian. You should comment on how funny she is. You're right. That's sexist. No, you got me. No, you're just you're just you're talking about a news story that happened. You weren't being sexist. No, yeah, I mean, you were commenting on her face. But you know what? I'd comment. You know, I'd comment on a guy's comment on a guy's face. Yeah, if a guy had a weird fucked up face, I'd say he had a fucked up face. Or I'll try to think of somebody right now, but I can't think of one. Uh, Ray Liotta. Yeah, he's got some lizard skin face. He's got plastic surgery for sure. Oh, he's on Chantix. I don't smoke anymore. Yeah, I love it. The ad where he's like reading the script and he's like smiling. It's like he's probably like, "What the fuck? Who killed me off?" Like he's threatening. He's very threatening. So Roseanne, she's threatening too. Yeah, not anymore. It was a nightmare. I watched like a behind the scenes thing where like Tom Arnold started dating her and he got like some coked up asshole who, who like inserted himself in the show and basically like took over like a Yoko Ono Beatles kind of thing. <laughs> what happened with his show when he was like trying to get Trump impeached? It was like He's on... full of shit. Was... Hey, I got something. He claims they, that. He like promoted that show for months. What show? I mean, I heard he. It was a show that was going to. I didn't... I guess it aired. Trump had him beaten in the middle of the night. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like the, you're promoting this way too long. You're too, way too much. You just need to. He air lost it. a bunch of weight, and he looks like one of those people that looks better heavy. Does that make sense? Yeah, oh yeah. I've like, commented on many. Him and Al Roker, like they've lost a bunch of weight, and they just look like they got A's or something. I'm just saying. I'm just being honest. Like you look sick. Yeah. Like you're maybe they lost it too fat, and their body hasn't adjusted. Because I know Al Roker got his stomach stapled. Like diet and exercise. No, can't do it. <laughs> I'm brave though. I'm a hero. I heard it's pretty hard eating stuff because you can really get diarrhea really bad. If, like if you eat too much, it's actually probably worse off to do it that way. Because oh. your because your body you, you you just like all of a sudden you didn't over time curb your yeah you got to do it over time. Just all of a sudden you just stopped. You don't alter the behavior either. Like yeah. you don't you, you, obviously you need to like change your diet and exercise and no I'm just gonna cut my stomach in half. 
<laughs> and then start from there. Yeah, that's hard. From from, from surgery. Yeah. You uh, just stop eating. Or I whatever, saw a, eating a documentary about some guy. He was like 800 pounds or whatever. I'm exaggerating. But he got his like a ring around his stomach, and it was like fucking flab, man. Like mm-hmm. like it's saggy shit. Yeah. So like you gotta like work out. It's not well. That you, skin will still never go away. You look better fat. Like you look horrible with that. Like you know, yeah, I'm skinny, but you got like your skin. Well, I think sagging. the argument is that you're healthier. You just don't. You don't you, look. The point of the documentary wasn't that. It was no. that it's a bad idea. <laughs> was it? Yeah, because he like started pounding some Sundays, man, and like fucking got sick because he didn't change how he ate. Mm. I mean, I get it. Like, if you're, like, 800 pounds and you're going to die, yeah, nothing's working. Some people are genetically heavy. Some people are genetically predisposed. And then some people are just, like, because of the way they live their life are heavy. Right. So I think one's okay and one's not. I think if you're, like, I don't know. I never thought Al Roker was that heavy to get his uh, whatever stomach cut in half or stapled or whatever. And whoever the fuck else I was talking about. Tom Arnold, he was never that heavy. I didn't think so. I don't think he got his stomach stapled, though. I remember reading he just, like, quit eating, like, bread and shit. I've always heard that. Quit eating, like, bread. But anyway, he looks sick. I heard that he had a tape on Trump using racial comments when he was on The Apprentice. I never heard he had his own show, that he was going to do a show about it. I heard he had a tape that he was going to reveal uh, around the election, and he never revealed it, probably because his hands were broken by... Uh, <laughs> Mar-a-Larco thugs. Either that or he saw that all the other stuff that was coming out on him and it didn't infect him. He was like, oh, this is pointless. Uh, Tom Arnold's got nothing going for him, man. He needs the attention. Yeah, that's probably what it was. I just didn't hear anything. Oh, come I just, on. I just heard it promoted for for months. What channel or what, what, cha- on or what Vice? channel? <laughs> Viceland. Oh, Viceland. Yeah, I mean, they could pretty much have anything on the guy. It won't matter. It won't matter. I don't know. Can you imagine that'd be the the true test if like something came from this Epstein case or like underage girls like how 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 far how far south of of the news can it go for Trump to people to not I don't want to find out <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's going to be the 2020 surprise I don't want to find out that's it's just going to be disturbing I don't uh I mean whatever like if he did something he deserves what he gets but like just oh this is just too much <laughs> Too much. But even so. Too much scandal. The scandal, I can't take it. There's so much scandal. I mean, Epstein took the coward's way out. They say it's the coward's way out. And I'm going to say something kind of fucked up. Well, I, I actually, I shouldn't say this. I can't say it. Say it. Well, I'm going to be a counselor. I can't say this. Seriously, I can't. Like, I'm studying psychology. I can't say it. You're going to say it takes a lot to kill yourself? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, like, seriously, like, I probably won't get my license if anyone hears me saying that. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I talk to somebody and go, well, yeah, it's actually courageous. It's not courageous. It's a state of mind. Here's the thing is, yeah, it takes a lot to kill yourself. I'm too scared to. That probably means you're not you're not in the, the right mind to do so. That's good. I think, like, you just, I think we were talking about in a previous show where where you're like, uh, you want to be a teacher? And I'm like, no. And you're like, you'd be a school counselor. It's like, yeah, I would. And I'd like to say that I would take somebody who's having trouble and say, this is four years of your life, and it doesn't fucking matter. And, yeah, there's a lot of people in this school, and they're going to, like, live this life for the rest of their life and talk about this shit forever. And that's not meant for everybody. And it's okay. Just get through it, and it'll be fine. Because that's pretty much what people need to hear. This is just temporary. People don't realize it's temporary. If you don't listen, if shit happens, people like are sad and depressed. You think it's permanent. Everything's phase. Everything's up and down. You go up, then Not you're down. Unless something uh, provocative ends up on the internet. Like what? Provocative? I mean, like what? what You've seen you? Euphoria. Anything can end up online that these that these kids are doing. That could be pretty hard hitting for for a person at any age. Well, here. Yeah. Granted, th- it's it, it's temporary. I mean... You're ma- talking about somebody uh, having intimate photos or videos being yeah. disseminated on online. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And you know what they say is you shouldn't take those pictures. That's what they say. Anytime it happens to a celebrity or something, we shouldn't be have naked pictures. 
I mean, well, I can see that argument, but isn't it horrible where you can't because someone will hack and like, like <laughs> Leslie Jones, <laughs> they did it to her. Man, I didn't see that. Well, no, I didn't see it either. I didn't want to see it. No offense to her. Not trying to be mean, but like everyone's like, don't have naked pictures. It's like, well, I don't know. Uh, you didn't. You don't know if you're being filmed half the time anyway. I mean, I could speak from experience. So I don't want to get into. Moral of the story, don't become famous. You don't know if you're being recorded. <laughs> don't become famous. Don't become famous and watch out for people recording you, video or audio. Yeah. Because once they have it, once you send that snap or whatever, they can save that. I mean, you have a moment where you can save that, I think, before it goes away. I'm not 15, so I'm not on Snapchat as much. But they can save that. Snapchat's on Snapchat's. That's why Snapchat it's was invented lame, dude. to send something and ha- and have it be deleted. But you can save it though. Is what I'm saying. Nothing is. I don't think you, can you save videos? Hmm. You can take a screenshot of a picture. I know that. That's still though. You send some tits or a dick. But then it gets. A, but then the user gets alerted. But still, yeah, it can still happen. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm alerted. Now I know. Now I know they saved a picture of my shit. You know. I think that does it for this week. Uh, I'm Jerry. I bet whoever is listening to this is happy that it's over. See you later. I'm Matt. (laughs) This has been a happy medium on Atomic.